Hey folks, I'd like you to set up your notes like this today and <clears throat> I don't want to get too crazy in notation. Um, <clears throat> we're going to try to understand what a differential is and then be aware the way they write an equation that they're going to be asking us to take the antiderivative and what the little differentials mean. Okay. So we're going to have some awareness of this kind of notation and then we're going to know that they're telling us to find an antiderivative and, and what to do in that situation when they ask us to find the antiderivative. I hope that's clear. <laughs> so here's what I have on, on Desmos. I want you to, to look at something with me. Um, <clears throat> so let me see if I can get over to Desmos. Where the heck did it go? Here it is. Um, I put in a function. You can see the red function. Uh, you know, it's some h of x function. I'm not going to make up a story for this. And you can see it's that red parabola right there, right? Then I said, well, let's take the derivative and you could do that algebraically. I, I did it initially. And then I thought, well, it just kind of complicates things to have, you know, 0.8x here, but you could definitely do that power rule, right? If I want the slope at 1.5, so right here at 1.5, I want the slope. Well, I do h prime of 1.5. That means the slope at 1.5, right? And then what I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm translating my uh, special point over 1.5 to the right. That's what x minus 1.5 does. So instead of going through the origin, I'm going x minus 1.5. So it moves it over to 1.5. Then I'm moving it up to h of 1.5. So the y value, I want my tangent line to go right through h of 1.5 or 1.5 comma h of 1.5. So here we are right here. And... Uh, it's 1.5 comma 1.9. Okay, so this must be about 1.9 right here, or exactly 1.9. Anyways, <clears throat> this tangent line does a great job at approximating this red function when we get super, 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 super close. You can't even see the difference between the two, right? Like the green one is right on top of the red function. If I turn the green one off, you'd see the red function, but the green one's sitting on top of it. And there's just like no error in that we can see at least between the two functions, right? So let me zoom back out so we can see a little bit of error because that error is kind of important in our discussion. All right, so keep in mind, this is 1.5 and this is two. In my notes, um, let's switch over to the note screen. <clears throat> I've labeled it down here. And this change in X is called delta X and it's equal to DX by their definition. I mean, that's just the way they define this stuff. This distance from here up to there, okay, let's, let's do that right now. This right here to the slope function is our dy, a little dy, uh, because we know that dy dx means the derivative, right? That's just another way of writing the derivative. So I'm coming over some dx amount, then I'm becoming, I'd be going up some dy amount to the, to the derivative, right? But if I want to get to the actual function up to here, up to that red function, this distance is called delta y. It's the change in our y value in our function. So there's definitely some error here between these two, right? Delta y is not exactly the same as dy unless we get super, super small dx's, okay? So if we came over here and we got super small, like, super, you know, super close to the, this point, then you're not going to see a whole lot of error between the dy and the, and the delta y. Um, so that is called local linearity. With that in mind, like I said, we're just going to touch on these things called differentials. So let's write a couple of them out here. Um, dx is the same thing as saying some change in x and dy is almost the same, it's approximately the same as delta y if dx is super small, is super small. So I'm just gonna leave it at that for now, okay? So what we're going to see on tonight's homework, I'm gonna put down the first problem we're gonna do right here, is you're gonna see something like this. You're gonna see dy is equal to 20x cubed, dx. Okay, so what the heck is going on here? <clears throat> well, 
if I move the dx back to the other side, like divide both sides by dx, okay? Divide this side by dx, divide this side by dx. We have dy dx is equal to 20x cubed. So what we're saying is this 20x cubed it's the derivative of some function, okay? And before I move the dx back to the other side, so let, let, well, let's make a little note of this. This is the derivative, okay? So put that in your notes. <clears throat> and before I move the dx back to the other side, we saw something like this. Let's see if this makes sense. They're saying that the dy, the dy is equal to the derivative times dx. Well, <clears throat> if I... If I come over some like 0.5 amount, um, and I'm and I was to multiply that 0.5 times whatever the derivative is, that would tell me my dy. That would tell me how many how to get right up to here, right? I mean, isn't that what our function's doing right over here? It's calculating the slope at 1.5, and it's taking it times the change in x. So like if I came over to 2, the change in x would be 2 minus 1.5, right? So that would be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times the slope, okay? 0 0.5 times the slope is going to tell me how much to, to rise from here, how much to go up to get to that spot right there. Now, <clears throat> you might say, what's this doing on the end here? Well, that is is giving us the original y value at 1.5 and then this is just the change the change that we need to add to the y value to get up to our to get up to our linear function there okay so i don't know if we need to understand all that in in a huge great depth here's really what they're asking us to do what is when it says do the antiderivative of this what is y equal to what was the original function <clears throat> if 20x cubed was the derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, it looks like, it appears like, because we don't have any rules for antiderivatives yet, but it appears like the original function must have been x to the fourth. If we're going to take the derivative of x to the fourth, we get x cubed, right? But <clears throat> when you do that derivative, um, you're going to have a four that comes down out front, right? So let's think about that for a second. Right now, there's a 20 as a coefficient in front of the, the x cubed, right? So let's put the 20 there for just a second. If it was 20x to the fourth and a 4 comes down out front, 4 times 20, let me, put a, let me put a 4 right here kind of in red, and I'll see if I can dash it. A 4 would come right out here, and we would have 4 times 20. But 4 times 20 is 80. We don't want 80 sitting right there. We want 20 sitting right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 4 so that this 4 will cancel out with the 4 that's going to appear when we take the derivative. Okay, so let me erase that little dash 4. That was just some thinking that I was doing in my head. And so I'm going to erase the, the 4 that's sitting right there because <clears throat> it's not there yet. It's going to be there, you know, like that four right there is going to come down up front and then it'll get canceled out with the four that we're dividing by. So I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that I need to take and I need to take uh, 20 divided by four. And I suppose you could simplify that down. Right. 20 divided by four is five X to the fourth. OK, so let me double check my thinking. If I take the derivative of this, I bring the four down out front. So Y prime would be equal to four times five x and then I reduce the power by one three I get 20 x cubed yeah so this is just my check I don't know if you remember doing that in like middle school I'm checking my math uh, so it, it definitely works out you don't have to show me this step the answer is you know like like this stuff right here okay so my, my simplified answer is over here this is simplified <clears throat> right and then this over here is like my unsimplified answer <clears throat> before I was, you know, I was just doing my thinking. So you're going to walk yourself back to the original function. That's what an antiderivative means. It means find the original, the original function if you're given the derivative. Given the derivative. Okay, so the problem is, you know, dy equals 20x cubed dx. 
you could imagine that dx being on the other side. This is just a little summary for you. Now you can clearly see this is the derivative. I want to get y. I want to get the original function. I don't want dy dx. I don't want y prime, right? So like this is y prime. <clears throat> I want y. And so I'm working my way back to the original function just using some kind of guess and check techniques. All right. I hope I'm making that clear. That's our homework today.